What's up guys, Brian here down in the Gecko Lab. In today's video, we're gonna be going over all of the options you have for housing hatchling crested geckos. So here I've got four different solid options that I would recommend you pick from when you're looking to house a, a young, really young hatchling crested gecko. Now this video is good for anybody. One, if you're a breeder, you're gonna need to have housing set up obviously before your geckos hatch because you're gonna need somewhere to keep them after they hatch. So having a few of these cages set up is good before you even start breeding. This is also good for somebody who's buying their first crested gecko and maybe you're buying one that's only a couple months old or younger you're gonna need a place to keep it obviously. So here's some options that you can use. I'm gonna go through these kind of from cheapest to most expensive and give you the pros and cons of both, as well as do a quick review or video on this guy that I've never done before. Um, first off, I'm gonna start with this. It is your basic six quart Sterilite shoebox tubs. These are incredibly popular in the reptile world in general, not just with crested geckos. A lot of people do keep their crested geckos in these. They're also real popular for leopard geckos, uh, small snakes, all kinds of stuff. Hatchling ball pythons go in these. They're real simple. The pros to these guys are they hold humidity very well. You can see I just drill a line of holes all the way around it to give it some airflow, but they do hold humidity very well. They are light, they're easy to stack, and they're cheap. These are a dollar a piece at Home Depot or Walmart. Super easy, super cheap, super easy to clean. The downside, obviously, they don't have as much vertical space, so your gecko can't climb as much. It's really not that big a deal, but it is something people see as a downside. And clearly, they're kind of ugly. It's just not very pretty. If you're looking to be economical and house a lot of geckos, this is the way to go. If you want your geckos to be a display piece, eh, this isn't really gonna do it for you. They're kind of ugly. The next step up is this guy. This one is called a pet carrier. They're also called critter keepers or cricket keepers. They come in a bunch of different forms, names, companies that make them, but they're all exactly the same. And these ones just have a lid that pops right off the top, as well as in the top of the lid, they have a little hatch that opens up so you can drop food in or put a gecko in without taking the whole lid off. The deal with these hatches, you have to make sure you clip it all the way down which can be a pain sometimes, but if not, it'll pop open real easy and your gecko will get out. Super cheap, again, super easy to get, super affordable, and they are stackable. They're not nearly as sturdy, but I have found if you pull these handles off, they do stack decently well, like a couple high, not a whole room's worth of them. But if you got maybe a handful of geckos, less than a dozen geckos, picking up a bunch of these is good. They're fairly cheap. The downside with these, is the entire top is screened and it has a lot of top space so they do dry out relatively quickly they're hard to keep very humid but for a good basic easy beginner young crested gecko setup these work very well and again they're cheap they look a little bit nicer than this fella obviously the next one that i would recommend for people who don't have too many geckos but you want something that looks nice is this guy this is the exoterra nano tall is what they call it it's eight inch by eight inch by 12 inches i use these for display tanks you'll see them sometimes in my videos when i'm just doing a talking head type piece and I'll put some geckos out just to have them on display during the video. That's what I use these guys for, but they make great baby cages too. Lots of vertical space. They're good looking, solid, sturdy glass terrariums. They've got that exoterra door that's a little bit of a pain to get the latch off, but not bad. It's super secure and the door opens right up on the front, which is super convenient. They're very, very safe. No room for geckos to get out of here. They're real secure. And these run about 35 bucks, which is not too expensive. It's a, you know, a bit of money for what you get for a small cage, but compared to a bigger Exoterra when you're spending 100, 150, $200 on a big setup, to get five of these if you've got a handful of baby geckos for what would five of them be? 150 bucks, under 200 bucks with taxes. Not a bad deal for a bunch of good looking cages that you could put a background in, put some sticks in, put some moss at the bottom, and it's a real good looking starter terrarium for your young geckos. The last one I wanna look at today is this guy. These are brand new from Zilla. I'm very interested in these. They're called micro habitats. Now this is actually the biggest one they make. It's eight inch by six inch by 14 inches tall. 
So it's the same volume as this guy. It's just skinnier on one side and two inches taller. So they're about the same size, just slightly different footprint dimensions. And these are pretty cool because they come in a box and you assemble it yourself. Now I've heard really good things about these, but I haven't actually used them myself. So this is the first one I've ever seen. We're gonna open it up and build it together real quick and see, I'll give you just a quick review and tell you what I like about them. Comes with some instructions, because like I said, you have to build it yourself. So this will tell you how to do that. It's got a bottom tray that you build, that's your footprint. These little rubber bands, they're like stretchy bands is what actually holds it all together. I guess the latch for the door is also right here. And then here is all your sides. So let's have a look at how you do this. Figure one. Remove clear protective film from each panel. All right, so all these all have, ooh, all you guys that think peeling this off is satisfying, you're gonna love this. You get to do it on all these different panels. Let's go ahead and take it off all of these guys. All right, it does not look like the bottom tray has any of the protective film on it. It does have a cool Zilla logo. That's kind of neat, especially for them. You can see once you get the film off, these are so clean. They just, they're, they're, they look so clean. It's a really neat look, especially for something that's not glass. So then we look at the next one, figure two, take your base and you're gonna put your sides in. That's what it's telling me. So your sides are the ones here with the vents. You can see it's got these vent holes cut in it. Pretty neat. Do, 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 do. Side, front, edge. So these just stick right onto that guy there. I think, I think, I think, I think. Back, this one should go hold down. I believe, yep, just like that. Actually, it goes on this side, Brian. So it's just kind of like building a puzzle. They all just fit together. Interesting. So it appears that once you put it together, you take these little rubber bands and you stretch them around this part and that is what holds it on there. These have little kind of hooks built in. So you put your panel on, stretch that rubber band around and it holds your panel in place, which is pretty neat. I kind of like this idea of a cheap, flat, easy to move cage that you buy and build yourself. So one of my concerns off the bat, I don't know how valid of a concern this is, but these little rubber O-rings that you stretch around that are the, uh, the glue, so to speak, that holds this whole thing together. I wonder how long they will last before they dry out because all rubber O-rings at some point will dry out, become brittle and break. So I do wonder, especially if you're using, whoa, I shot that one across the room. Whoops. I do wonder, especially if you have a heat source on this cage, if you put any sort of heat source over the top of it or near it, for one, is the plastic, the acrylic, gonna warp with the heat? And for two, are these gonna dry out, become brittle, and then if you have a gecko in it for six or eight months, these get brittle and you try and take it apart and they just break and your whole cage falls apart. That is something that I would wonder. So it does look like they give you two extra rubber bands. I've got one here and I shot one across the room. And then the locking feature that I'm pretty sure I put in upside down. All right, it took me a minute to figure it out, but I got it there. So let's check this out. So this locking feature at the top is pretty cool. You just, this peg goes into this little hole. You swing it up, spin it around, and then your whole front door opens straight down pick it back up it sits in its own little notch there spin the lock back on push the peg down 
interesting, interesting concept here. So a couple quick thoughts. It's not the sturdiest cage. It wobbles a little, but it certainly isn't gonna let your gecko out. It is shut well enough that nothing's getting out of this. I do really like the way this front works, how it just kind of lifts up and then comes down and the whole front opens up. Pretty ingenious little method, not the sturdiest thing in the world, but a, a neat little method to be able to open the front. One of my main concerns is these two vents on each side is the only ventilation built in. So I wonder if it's gonna hold humidity too much, but I have a feeling that because it's pieced together, it's all separate pieces. It's not like a glass cage with a silicone shut. It's a bunch of separate pieces being held up by rubber bands essentially that uh, there's a lot of airflow in between the cracks and the humidity won't be that big of a deal once you start using it. I wonder if that's the case. I think it might be. So for the price between this one and this one, I gotta tell you, this one is 36 bucks and this one is $32. I would go the extra four bucks for the glass cage every time. I think they're sturdier, I think they look better. It's, uh, I just think it's a better value. This one, no screen top, you can't put heating element at the top. To be fair, these are mainly made for insects, for people keeping scorpions, tarantulas, stuff like that is what they're designed for. But I thought they would work good for baby geckos. Crested geckos don't need heat or light, so they would work very well. Day geckos, something that needs UV light, obviously not gonna work in here. But for the price, 32 bucks for this one, 36 for this one, I would go with the glass one personally. But these are pretty interesting, pretty neat little kits. It's kinda neat that you get to build it yourself. It's kind of neat that you could just undo the rubber bands and take the whole bottom off and clean the bottom if you wanted to. Just an interesting little take on a setup. Really cool to see a new take on a setup. I don't know how much I love it. I like it, I don't love it. For the price, I would recommend this one over this one, like I said. I think it's worth the extra four bucks to get the glass cage, but a pretty neat little option. So. There you go, guys. Those are four cages that I would recommend for baby crested geckos. If you have any questions, as always, leave me comments down below. I do appreciate it. That's going to do it for me today. I'm Brian, AltitudeExotics.com. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.